Hi, this is Natalie from Wiseblood, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Wiseblood. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Marvelous. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for chatting. It's great to be here. We're glad to have you. So you are now on this North American tour here in Toronto tonight to play at the Baby G. Mm -hmm. How have the last couple of shows been treating you so far? You're only a few shows in. Yeah, this is our third show. Last night was Montreal, and it was a real big smash. People really like to get down in Montreal. There were a lot of Halloween parties, and um, it was in a really small space, and it got sold out really fast, so it was really packed and fun. Have and somebody kept doing the fog machine over and over again. <laughs> so you couldn't see anything. Well, it's a very exciting time because you just released your new record, Front Row Seat to Earth. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How does it feel to have finally unleash this with everybody? It's cool. It's, it's been um, a real blessing that people have gotten to hear it, and uh, I feel really, really stoked about the rest of this tour and going overseas. And I'm really excited to spread the blue vinyl all over the world. The blue vinyl, I love that. Yeah, we have blue vinyl. <laughs> it looked beautiful, and just speaking too beautiful, the artwork for this record, you look like such a lovely little mermaid. Where was that taken? Because it's such a nice cover. That was taken at the Salton Sea, which is an abandoned um, kind of resort lake town in the uh, desert of California. It was a man-made lake that evaporated slowly over time and oversalinated, like became too salty. And there was like a mass extinction of fish and wildlife. So it's kind of like an environmental disaster zone. And okay. then the resorts were all abandoned. And so it's like really blown out and abandoned. And it's like a very strange geological phenomenon because there's so many dead things. I think there's like maybe one type of fish that can still survive in the water. And so you, it's just like fish carcasses and dead birds and like weird um, sand that's mostly comprised of bones. Okay. And um, so that was taken there. I was wondering where all the bones came from, because you posted a photograph once the record was released, and you're like, it's finally out. We mm -hmm. dug up the album, and you put it with all these bones. So were those yeah. bones actually from that location? Yes. That's very cool. Oh, that post? Yeah. No, that's a Halloween display okay. in, in Glendale, <laughs> California, and some like rich, rich mansion in Glendale. Got um, it. Those are fake bones. Okay. The bones I'm talking about, primarily fish and bird bones. Those are some human bones on there. <laughs> Well, one thing I really love about this record is there's definitely a nostalgic feel to it, but then you have this really neat balance with these otherworldly electronics. So what about the juxtaposition first appealed to you? Um, I've always felt like a very polar person and that my interests don't really reconcile. Like I love, you know, experimental, kind of harsh, more avant-garde music, and I also love very traditional folk music and hymns. And um, bringing the two worlds together, it's very similar to like the chaos of modern life where... You might hear a beautiful song, but you'll hear traffic or like noise pollution outside. And it's kind of like the soundtrack to everything that's going on right now. The technological sounds that we're bombarded with every day. I mean, there's like a cell phone sound on the record yeah. in Generation Y. So I feel like it's um, like an apropos marriage to bring the two influences together. Kind of the more electronic with the more ancient acoustic instruments. I'm glad you brought up Generation Y because you just shared a new video for it, mm -hmm. which is very cool. You have a bunch of hard drives and cell phones all bleeding. It's like they all have their own emotions. They so do. If they do. Mm -hmm. So how did that all come about? What initially sparked the idea for that track? Um, that track, I had been really avoiding smartphone culture, um, and I was kind of a Luddite for many years. And then I finally started making friends that were like one or two years younger than me, which you wouldn't think is very much younger, but it actually... It is kind of a big difference because things change so fast. And so my new friends were very much smartphone active, very much hitting me up, sending me pictures, doing the whole smartphone thing. And my first introduction to it was like kind of like shocked and feeling like, whoa, I see what's going on here. Yeah. And it's like a desire to be connected. And it's a very like human instinct and the technology. It's like we're predisposed to kind of overuse it because we're predisposed to being connected to one another. And that's how we are, are as animals biologically. We're not like lone wolves, biologically. We're all meant to help each other out. Has there been a time where you felt like you might have been getting a little bit obsessed with it and you've just turned it off? Totally, yeah, yeah. I think everybody goes through that. I think there are very few people, maybe like people that are older might have a little bit more even keeled head about it, but if you're young or like younger than me, I think it's really difficult to avoid it. And um, it's like you, nowadays you can't not have an email. Nowadays you can't not have a cell phone. 
um, and the people that don't kind of like find a way to use other people's phones. <laughs> it's never like you're going to be completely exempt. That's Everything so is like shifting over to that. So I feel like everybody kind of has to find their threshold and realize when it's too much. And I think for most people, it's probably too much. All the time. All the time, especially because a lot of people bring it in their bed and like wake up in the morning and use it. And um, there's not much that we have in the way of like kind of protecting ourselves from that. They, they haven't made cell phone like lock boxes yet. <laughs> That's a good idea. I thought about yeah. it, yeah. And uh, I know they make like blackout programs or apps where your phone like blacks out and stops working. But I think most people are predisposed to being addicted to it because it taps into like human nature. Well, just speaking to technology, I have a couple of tweets that I really like that you sent out. So mm-hmm. I was just wondering if I could hear the thought process or what was going on before you tweeted these. Okay. All right, so the first one is, we should be letting children get tattoos. Looks really good on them. Yeah. Yeah, where'd that come from? Um, that's kind of a joke. I saw a child, you know, with a, a tat. It was the first thing, uh, the first time I ever saw a child with a tattoo. And How it old? did look really good. She was like eight or nine. Really? Yeah, I don't know what it was all about. I guess her mother gave it to her. It was on her calf. But um, I just remember thinking, wow, that looks really good. And then I just, you know, tweeted that, like, very spur of the moment to see how many people would agree. But I, I think it's a pretty morbid joke. I mean, <laughs> children with tattoos, what, what does the world come to? I have to ask, what was the tattoo on this eight-year-old? It was, like, a, a weird, like, Roman numeral two or something. Okay. It's very strange. And the other tweet I have, you said, I'm a special kind of clown. Yeah, I am a special kind of clown. I make people cry. <laughs> so I don't make people laugh. Okay. Um, my music makes people cry sometimes. Yeah. So I think that is like a special kind of clown. It's a clown. Clown is like, you know, hey, here's this emotion I'm going to make you feel, whether it's laughter or something else. And I'm the kind of clown. Because in my, I feel like I am a clown as a performer. Like I kind of put on my mask and I do my thing and get into character. And um, it makes people cry, so... Not all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> I think someone even sent out a tweet, just took a nice bike ride listening to your music, and they're like, I've never cried on a bike before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not something that I, I intentionally try to do. Yeah. I think it, it's just a product of being really honest and vulnerable in the recordings. Hey, as long as it's evoking some sort of emotion, you're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Strap up everything up today. Is there anything you want to leave with all of your fans who will be viewing our interview? Um... Thank you so much for listening to the record and stay tuned. There's more to come. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I've written that's not been recorded and at least two albums worth that'll be coming out real soon. So stay tuned. Awesome. I just want to thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you next time. Thanks.